Hey buddies, how are you all doing? Yes, all my future doctors, hope you all are doing great. A very warm welcome guys to this class. This is your lecture number two and I am your Chavi ma'am discussing your chapter locomotion and movement. So in the locomotion and movement, I told you there are two parts. One is a muscle and second we have is a skeletal system. So today we will be continuing with the muscle which we have started in the previous class. Guys, have you gone through the previous session? If not, go through that now because then only you'll be able to understand this topic which we are going to discuss today. The topic of today's class is a sliding filament theory that is a mechanism of muscle contraction we will be dealing today. So ready? Are you ready everyone? Let's start. Okay. So, muscles, type of muscles and specifically buddies, the skeletal system, the skeletal muscle we have completed, skeletal muscle structure. Structure we have done in previous class. You remember? This we have done in previous class. Now, we will be proceeding further about the how does this uh, mechanism of contraction that means how does this uh, muscle contraction, mechanism of muscle contraction we will be dealing today. Clear? Now, before talking further, let us first talk about the contractile protein that is the structure of contractile protein. I just want to give this PPT, this my touch and there are topics which we have to include. That is the uh, reason I have some uh, 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 hand drawn diagrams are there. So, to give you a feel that this is how the things they look like and this is how you will be drawing in your uh, paper and just to save the time, I have some uh, diagrams ready. Now, the structural contractile protein, when we talk about the contractile protein, contractile proteins are those proteins which helps in the mechanism of contraction and relaxation. What are these? These are your actin, just focus over here, right? And the second one we are having is the myosin, actin and myosin, actin and myosin. Now, these actin and myosin, they contract or they club with each other, they slide over each other. Like I uh, told you, let us understand the phenomena. So, buddies, in the previous session, we have talked regarding the sarcomere. So, I am making a rough diagram of a sarcomere and then we will proceed further. Do not worry, things will be super duper easy and super duper comfortable to you guys because Whatever we are discussing directly from your NCRT in detail, yes also because we have to understand certain lines which are there in the NCRT. Now, you remember this diagram we have done in the previous session, right? This is a diagram of a sarcomere. This is a diagram of a sarcomere. Clear? Yeah. Now, this is termed as, you can see, this is what? This is your myosin, right? This is the actin. This is actin. So these are two proteins which basically helps in the process of contraction and relaxation. Now, please remember this line, actin slides over actin slides over over myosin during muscle contraction during muscle contraction actin slide over myosin during muscle contraction. Now, these actin, they will come over the myosin. This contraction happens. Clear? Now, when you look at the structure, structure, the structure of a muscle fiber, in the muscle fiber, the myofibrils are there. These myofibrils, they look like the dark and the alternate light and the dark bands are there. You know, why this light in the dark, dark band? See, now this particular area appears dark. This is termed as dark band. 
Now dark band is composed of, listen very carefully, dark band is made up of two things. One the green in color which is your myosin plus actin. Whereas this particular area, I label this here, this one area, this will appear light in color. Why light in color? Because it has only actin only actin. Now, hope the concept of dark and the light is clear to you. Guys, see, things are there in NCRT, but I am making the topics interesting and easy for you. So, is this clear? Now, those who say that, uh, those who, many students, they get confused and ma'am, myosin means a band, uh, myosin means a dark band. Yes, myosin is there in the dark band, along with the actin is also there. You getting with this point? So both of them they are present. But when we are only having actin, so that means it is a light band. So the alternate light and light and dark band of myofibril is clear to you. Uh, this is a diagram of a sarcomere. This is your Z line. Clear? Now here we will be having M line. These things we have discussed. M line. Now if you look at this structure. The basic contraction and relaxation is actin and myosin. It is because of the actin and myosin. So, we are starting the today's topic with actin and myosin. Okay. So, first let us talk about the actin. Yeah. So, actin is what? Actin, please remember. Specific line for actin. It slides over slides over myosin. It slides over myosin. Right? And what is myosin? Myosin is that structure which has actin binding site. Actin binding site. It has actin binding site. Clear? Now, let us look at the composition. Let us look at how many things they are present in actin, how many things they are present in myosin. First, actin is made up of some globule, globular proteins. Let us make this with white color. First of all, some white globular proteins are there. What are these? Globular protein. Now, with the help of Mg2 plus ion, right, they form log chain like structure. Which is termed as F. F actin. Factin. It's not factin, it is F actin. I'll write this, this again. Otherwise, you will get confused. Which is F actin. Now, guys, can you see this structure? This is whole actin look like. Whole actin. This whole structure is of actin. Guys, can you see these two white chain globular thing? Now, this is termed as F actin. F actin is that structure which is having, which actually binds to the myosin, right? This is the one which binds to myosin, binds to myosin, clear? Yeah. Now, this is the first structure which they have. This is the first structure which they have, clear? Yeah. Let us talk about the second structure. Second is in yellow. Uh, <coughs> so let's use the same color, yellow. So the second structure which is present over here, they are the structure which is termed as tropomyosin. Tropomyosin, right? 
So how many affectant chain are there? How many affectant did you notice? Two. How many tropomyosin chain will be there? Let's label this tropomyosin. Tropomyosin. How many tropomyosin buddies? Two. Two. Clear? Now, what is the function of tropomyosin? So, tropomyosin is a preventive protein. It is a preventive or it is a regulatory regulatory protein which hides the binding site of binding site of what the actin here how many number two let's talk about the third one third is termed as troponin what is the name troponin troponin the troponin is of three type. Three different troponin are there. Troponin C. Troponin T. Clear? Okay. Right? Or let's say I. Right? I. Right? Next one is Troponin M. Three sites are there. Are you getting this point? C is the site of calcium. Calcium binding. Calcium binding site. Calcium binding site. Here, here, this I, I is an inhibitory site. Inhibitory site. Right. <clears throat> Next one is TPA. Uh, basically, it binds to the tropomyosin, TPM. Right. It binds to tropomyosin. Now, this is how the whole three different structures look like. Okay? Now, <clears throat> look at this. Whenever, whenever the effectin molecule is, effectin molecule, two effectin molecules are there, their binding site to myosin is masked by tropomyosin. It is masked by tropomyosin. On the tropomyosin, we have this structure which is termed as troponin, which is troponin. Whenever troponin, this structure, binds with calcium ion, see, whenever the calcium ion will come over here, this tropomyosin will leave the active site or the binding site of F active. Please remember this. What I am saying is, I will, uh, what I am saying is, calcium ion binding to troponin will cause the release, not complete release, it is like a unwinding of tropomyosin over F actin so that binding site of F actin to myosin will be released. So, how can you show, uh, show you this? Uh, I'll take this example of this pen. I'm looking for some wire-like of things. So let's take this example, uh, a wire-like thing. One second. <clears throat> okay. So this is a wire-like thing, and this wire-like thing is wrapped around it. Clear? Yeah. And this is a preventive. Whenever we are seeing that these tropomyosin, they are released. In that case, the active site, the binding site of the actin, F-actin will be released. Clear? 
actin is clear actin actin molecule is clear clear so these two these two are the regulatory things these two see these are the structural protein f actin is a structural one this is the structural contractile protein this is a structural which is responsible for a contraction and relaxation right whereas these two they are the regulatory one regulatory protein which basically helps in the process of regulation yeah. how does it occur we'll be looking at it now myosin if you look at the myosin myosin is made up of this is made up of made up of lots of neuromyosin neuromyosin means Myosin is formed by the polymerization of meromyosin. Now, these meromyosins, they look like this. One meromyosin, they look like this. Clear? Yeah, this is a whole diagram of a meromyosin. This is not a diagram of a myosin. This is a diagram of meromyosin. Meromyosin. Clear? Yeah? It has long tail. How many long tail? Two long tail. It has two, two long tail, two long tail, and it is having this whole cross arm, cross arm. Now here, head-like structure is there. On one side, you will find the actin binding site. On another structure, you will find the ATP binding site. Now, this is actin binding site. Binding site. Right? What is this? What is this? This is the ATP binding site. Binding site. And it has the activity of ATPase enzyme. ATPase enzyme activity. These two are present on a head, head, right? These two are head. Now, these two head, they are termed as globular head. Globular head. Heart. Globular head. Clear? Now, this structure, please focus everyone. Okay. Now, this structure, this one. This is a short arm. Now, basically, two structures are there. One is a long tail. Two long tails are there. And now, these two long tails are wrapped around each other. And two, just imagine I have one head, I have two head. Like two cross arms are there. This we call it, the whole thing is termed as a cross arm. So, just imagine I, your chubby mom is having two head. So, these two are the cross arms. Both are the cross arms. Which is having this globular head. Two globular heads will be there. In one globular head, there will be actin binding site. In another globular head, there will be ATP binding site, which will be having the ATPase enzyme activity. There will be a short arm present. Two short arm, neck-like structure. Two short arm are there. Clear? Meromyosin. Now, do you want to have a look how this meromyosin look like? Okay. Look at this. So, this is a meromyosin. This is not a... See, this is... It is like the structure is like this. This is one meromyosin. This is another meromyosin, like this, the other fiber, the another meromyosin heads. Now, these heads, these heads, they attach themselves to the actin. Clear? Now, let's understand the phenomena. Let's understand the typical phenomena. Now, at relaxation stage, this is a relaxed state. This is a relaxed state. Okay. Relax state. This is a relaxed state. At the relaxed state, the condition looks like somewhere uh, uh, like this. Now, let's label everything in this diagram itself. Let's recall. This is your A band. A band. Your dark band. This is your I band. I band. This is also your I band. 
right this is your this one which is just having the uh, what do i say <clears throat> o band let's write in this way this is o band o band this is o band here so similarly over here also i have made it short let's make the in the same size Band. Clear? Now hope this band is clear. O band, O band. In the center there will be M line. In the center there will be M line. Clear? Let's make that also. Right, so this is a M line. This is a M line. Clear? Yeah. This is a Z line. Now, as I told you, this actin slides over myosin. If actin slides over myosin, this is how the contracted state look like. State look. Now, from these statements, some questions they come directly. Questions come directly. Now, first is length of a band guys what is a band what is a band what is a band i'll i'll, I'll discuss with you in the easiest way now uh, in a contract like the question comes like this what happens to the length of a band what happens to the length of the o band what happens to the m line what happens to the z line whenever the contraction occur these questions they are mostly most frequently asked question in your neat examination so you should be ready regarding this first let's talk about the length of a band so what is the length of a band a band length that means your myosin myosin length basically it has myosin length it basically it is made up of actin as well as myosin but wheresoever the myosin is there so that means it is a dark band right and that is a a band it is now in this case guys both of both of, compare both the diagrams and look at the condition in both the condition you will find the length of a band remain unchanged right here also do the same thing one second one second one, just one second Right. So, what will happen to the length of A band? A band will remain unchanged. Clear? In contracted state. Let us talk about the length of I band. I band. 
I band is your isotropic band. So this is the band which is just having the actin. Only actin is there. Only actin. Now look at this. Initially, the actin is present in lot of region. Now, as they will slide over each other, as they will slide over each other, what will happen? The length of I band reduces. Reduces. Length of I band reduces. Clear? Let's talk further about the center band. What is that? That was a H zone. Are you getting that point? That was just a H zone. H zone was present. So H zone. What will happen to the H zone? So what is H zone, buddies? This this particular region is H zone. So H zone is only having myosin. Only myosin place. Now, we do not have only myosin place. Wheresoever myosin is present, myosin is present along with actin. So, this reduces, right? Or this goes away. This reduces. Right? Clear? What about the M line? M line. M line also disappears. N line also disappears. Let's talk about length of O band. O band. O band. Length of O band. So O band is that band where the uh, actin is present. This is one where actin is present plus the myosin is present on one side. Clear? Now, as they will slide over, as they will slide over each other, what will happen? O band length increases. Length increases. So these are certain terms which you have to remember. First, let's discuss this again. But guys, when we talk about the length of A band, length of A band, A band is that band where only the myosin, this but band, where only the myosin. That means A band is what? A band is your dark band. This is your dark band. So, dark band will remain same because myosin is there. Myosin is not reducing its size. It's just the actin which is sliding over the myosin. So, hope this point is clear. Let's talk about the length of I band. Now, what is this I band? I band is your this one band where only actin is present. Now, as they will shift, look at this diagram. Now, I'm making this diagram again super simple for you. Now, as they will shift, they will come to this position. As they will shift, they will come to this position. So, that means initially the I band was this much. Now, the I band will remain this much. So, it also reduces. Let's talk about the H zone. H zone. So, what was the H zone? H zone, H zone was that zone which was present in between the myosin. So, what was the H zone? H zone was that zone which was present in between in between myosin myosin and that is light in color that is light in color now as they are sliding over each other h zone h zone now what will happen the actin will also come over here so h zone will reduces m line it will disappear o band o band was having the actin as well as myosin they will increase in size because now what is happening the actin will slide over it and it will be occupying more space Clear? So, mechanism of muscle contraction, this clear. Now, this is termed as the sliding filament theory. This is the, this is not yet completed. Sliding filament theory. Now, question arises, when does this contraction and relaxation occur? When does this contraction and relaxation occur? Uh, let's talk about it. Now, let's go deep into this topic. <clears throat> we are having motor neuron. Motor neuron. Right? From motor neuron, signal comes. That means depolarization 
that means depolarization of the nerve first step is clear due to which due to which here when it reaches the terminal these are the motor nerve when it reaches the terminal calcium ion comes in calcium ion comes in clear this is a second step step number 2 now here buddies we are having some vesicles containing neurotransmitters these vesicles they will come and fuse and they will release a neurotransmitter outside now what is the third step third step is third step is i'm writing third step over here release of neuro or let's say let's make it more simple more accurate in fact exocytosis exocytosis of acetylcholine which is a neurotransmitter in in here in this space clear yeah. of acetylcholine now acetylcholine vesicles now acetylcholine will come over here ach will come over here clear acetylcholine will come over here now <clears throat> this motor neuron is in touch with our muscle fiber which diagram is it the muscle fiber muscle fiber now this muscle fiber is having outermost covering which is termed as the sarcolemma clear this type of junction between motor neuron and the muscle fiber this is termed as neuromuscular junction so this is a diagram of of neuromuscular junction this is a diagram of neuromuscular junction this is a neuron right this is a muscle fiber now they are associated to one another so this is a diagram of neuromuscular junction this is also termed as motor end plate what is this motor end plate clear now these acetylcholine acetylcholine will bind on the receptors now there are some receptors present on the surface now these acetylcholine they will bind bind here yeah. they will bind over here now because of this there will be opening of sodium ion channel so step number 4 opening of of sodium ion channel right now out of all these there is one property of a muscle fiber what is that one property is the excitability right you remember excitability so there will be excitation initially inside inside now remember inside it is negative 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 outside it is positive 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 as the sodium ion will go inside sodium ion will go inside inside become positive inside become positive and outside become negative so fifth step is the there will be potential generation that means the depolarization of the muscle fiber
that means excitation of the muscle fiber will occur once it is excited in that case now these polarization will transfer to this structure now this structure is termed as the sarcoplasmic reticulum sarcoplasmic reticulum there will be a reticulum now this sarcoplasmic reticulum will release this will release calcium ion it's a storage house of the calcium ion calcium ion are there calcium ion are there so they will release a calcium ion now this calcium ion will bind to the receptor present on the troponin present on the troponin now is this concept clear now depolarization is done now the next step is step number 6 step number 6 is release of calcium ion from release of calcium ion from sarcoplasmic reticulum seventh step is binding of calcium ion to troponin tpc tpc now there will be muscle contraction how there will be muscle contraction let's have a look let's have a look how there will be muscle contraction now <clears throat> we are having f actin molecules what is this f actin f actin on the f actin tropomyosin is attached this is our tropomyosin is attached right right let's label this simultaneously otherwise you will forget let's do uh, one thing let's first draw now tropomyosin is attached tropo above the tropomyosin there is one segment of troponin which is termed as t p p p m p p m we are having one calcium binding site which is termed as this i'll label this as t p c clear yeah. t p c there is one t p i also which is attached like this what is this t p i api clear yeah, this is how it is attached here on f actin here please listen here 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 this is the myosin binding site myosin binding site now look at this condition right this is the structure myosin binding site what is this this is tropomyosin tropomyosin here we are having one structure which is the o oh. right as the calcium ion when bind over here this is the calcium ion once the calcium ion will bind over here this white tpi will change its position will change its position 
that means now the myosin binding site is exposed right now this myosin this myosin binding site will bind to the myosin right so here this is the uh, you can say uh, when calcium will come so this is without calcium this is one i am writing no calcium when there is no calcium in this case the myosin binding site binding site is hidden is hidden right in this case whenever there is calcium calcium presence myosin binding site is exposed site is exposed and when i am saying the myosin binding site is exposed in that case now the myosin they can bind over the actin clear so this is a contracted state this is a relaxed state now look at this look at this diagram this is a normal state right now once calcium ion will come now this myosin head will bind to the actin this will bind to the actin and this will pull the actin towards itself now there will be see now there will be binding so this is how the globular heads are there globular head will bind and they will pull pull towards each other clear yeah. okay 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 so muscle contraction tpi etc so pull is clear so uh, hope uh, the length how the length will be affected that is also done to you guys yes everyone so please note this down and then we will proceed further so students now let's proceed further now now let's talk about the role of atp role of atp guys till now we have discussed about the formation of cross bridges now till now we have just discussed about what we have discussed till now the formation of cross bridges formation of cross bridges this we have discussed now cross bridges means what let's understand this now this is a myosin right now these are the myosin head right now they will attach themselves they will attach themselves to the now they will attach themselves to the they will attach themselves see initially what has happened is formation of the cross bridges now formation of cross bridges i can easily explain see the diagram which is there in the ncert that you will not be able to understand so here what is happening is binding of binding of myosin on actin clear this we have done this we have done clear now in the sliding filament theory it is clearly mentioned that actin they slides over the myosin but till now we have only talked about the binding procedure the sliding we haven't discussed now let's proceed further now the next step it will do what now the next step will be next step listen very carefully there will be breakdown of breakdown of cross bridges now listen to this point <clears throat> this is i'm just making one diagram myosin right now this is how it is attached this is how it is attached right 
here but is we are having the acting i'm just making one uh, diagram because now i have to show you the sliding the sliding how does the slide occur now if this binding is clear right one one i am showing just one right now what will happen the next step is it will release it let's understand right oh, once again so yes <clears throat> just making one diagram buddies This is the this is the myosin head. Myosin head release itself. Myosin head will release itself. And whenever it release itself, see there is a space created. Right? Release itself. They will release itself. So the next step is so breakdown of the cross bridges. It is done, right? Now at this particular time, at this particular time, one ATP, one ATP is utilized, right? That means ATP will be broken down into ADP plus PI. Why? Because now it is going to pull itself. Look at this. Now this myosin head will pull itself to this position. It's like a liver. Liver. Initially the liver is like this. Now it is going to pull like this. Pull like this. Now what will happen? This is myosin. Myosin, myosin, myosin. Now now their heads are like this because now why they utilized uh, 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 sorry the ATP the reason is they are moved from their original position now they will bind to the actin now they will bind to the actin now they will bind to the actin so yeah they will bind to the actin now what will happen they will come back to their original position. They will come back to their original position. So this is their original position. Like this shape is their original position. Now they will come back to their original position. Now let's see. Now, so what will happen? This is the myosin. This is the myosin. Now, they will come back to their original position. They will come back to the original position. Guys, are you getting this point? Initial position is like this. The first binding. This is a binding procedure. Right. First one, this is the binding. Binding. Right. Cross bridges formation. First step. Right. Second thing, this is the second step, which is the breakdown. of cross bridge this is a diagram indicating cross bridge breakdown so when there is a break a breakdown a cross bridge breakdown the atp is utilized what is the third step third step is this this is this is this is their binding right breakdown of uh, uh, sorry uh, binding uh, normal binding then there will be breakdown of the cross bridges now the cross bridges third one Cross bridge, cross bridges will shift or basically the myosin head. Head 
will shift to backside backside right will shift to the backside now once they will shift to the backside right the fourth step is the cross bridge formation cross bridge formation the fifth step is pulling of actin pulling of actin so that head myosin head head can reach to normal position so that myosin head will reach to the normal position myosin head normal position myosin head can reach to the normal position clear are you getting this point do you want me to repeat this i'll do that i'll i'll repeat everything one second now <clears throat> let's write this down first step first step is the binding of myosin head to actin actin right that to in the normal position in the normal position it is attached in the normal position this is how you can understand now but now breakdown of cross bridge cross bridge breakdown of cross bridge third step moving of globular head in opposite direction opposite direction and when it occurs there is utilization of atp there is utilization of atp right what about the fourth step what will be the fourth step guys now pulling of atp or pulling of actin towards towards m line towards m line now the globular head they are coming to the original position what will happen there will be formation of atp there will be formation of atp so it is like this globular head normal position go back go back go back right they will utilize the uh, atp they will bind then they will come back to the position they will synthesize atp clear they will release themselves they will release see now it they are going to release now look at this position look at this position initially the head globular heads they are present like this now globular head head will go back oh my god pain pain that means atp utilization they'll go back they will attach themselves to the actin now they'll pull the actin towards itself this is a normal position synthesis of the atp they will again detach go back utilize atp bind pull and then detach so there is formation as well as the utilization of atp in the whole cycle so this is termed as the sliding filament theory so this was all the case related to the sliding filament theory and ultimately result we are having is the contracted state this is the contracted state now how everything comes back to the normal position let's have a look look at this now this two things will happen after some time the calcium ion channel from the sarcoplasmic reticulum they will close enzyme termed as acetylcholine esterase will digest this acetylcholine into acetate and choline no acetylcholine no binding no depolarization or no release of the calcium ion further nothing will happen Clear? So two things will happen. The first thing is you should know acetylcholine will be digested by acetylcholine esterase. 
clear they will be digested by acetylcholine esterase and once it is digested by the acetylcholine esterase no acetylcholine no acetylcholine that means this calcium ion channel will close now calcium ion are already there in the sarcoplasm because they initially they came out they are there in the sarco sarcoplasm now the calcium there will be pump will be there that pump will be pulling the calcium ion back to the sarcoplasmic reticle so this is the relaxed state here now let's talk about let's write the relaxation relaxation of muscle fiber that means contracted state contracted state to normal state of muscle fiber normal state of muscle fiber normal state contracted state to normal state now in this particular stages two things happen first release of acetylcholine acetylcholine esterase acetylcholine esterase and the second step acetylcholine esterase and the second step is the opening of opening of the calcium pump in sarcoplasmic reticulum so the first step you can say is this one acetylcholine esterase so what will happen the acetylcholine will be broken down into the acetate and choline and choline yeah opening of the calcium ion pump this will do what this will reduce the calcium ion in sarcoplasm yes so from the contracted state normal state will occur so the calcium ion will be released and once calcium ion is released now what will happen this position will again come back this position right myosin binding site will be hidden myosin binding site is hidden now in that case there will be a relaxed state clear so we have talked a lot about this topic today we have talked about the structure of contractile protein we have talked about the mechanism of muscle contraction whole sliding filament theory the neuromuscular junction and also we have talked about the role of atp yeah and last the relaxation of the muscle fiber you know muscle fiber they have to come back to the relaxed position if they'll not come back to the relaxed position in that case what will happen if there is no relaxation just think, think about it if there is no relaxation then in that case uh, the muscle will be under the fatigue <clears throat> suppose you are doing a stenosis exercise in the case of stenosis exercises oxygen will be utilized and there will be other than oxygen there will be anaerobic breakdown also will occur the pyruvic acid will be converted into the lactic acid now that lactic acid accumulation will occur that lactic acid will be utilized by uh, that lactic acid will cause pain in the muscles later on we require uh, uh, oxygen for the oxygenation of the lactic acid we do not want lactic acid we want oxygenation of the lactic acid for the oxygenation of the lactic acid we require oxygen and this oxygen will come from the breathing so the breathing rate increases during the stenosis exercises not in the normal exercises i am saying a normal movement but yes the breathing rate increases in the stenosis exercises this is because of that because the oxygen in the muscle reduces anaerobic breakdown is fine but the lactic acid oxidation is also important if this will not happen it will lead to the muscle pain okay So let's wind up the session over here. See you guys in the next class, ah, uh, where we will be discussing the skeletal system in a short way. I'll be teaching you the skeletal system, and I'll make sure everything should be super duper clear to you. So take care, buddy. See you in the next class. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this.